Good evening, I'm Bo Williams. Welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list for us tonight, events to keep alive the promise that we would never forget the terror attacks and the bravery shown by first responders 22 years ago on September 11th, 2001. It's a wound that never heals, really. You, you know people that were involved. I personally knew some of them that, that passed away. And... This morning in Knoxville, a memorial ceremony to honor those who lost their lives that day, starting with a moment of silence at 8.46 a.m., the exact time the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Leaders of the ceremony then laying a wreath of flowers at the 9-11 monument in downtown Knoxville. Later, hundreds gathered at the Sun Sphere today to commemorate 9-11. Dozens, including several local fire agencies, paid tribute to the 343 firefighters who gave their lives at the World Trade Center 22 years ago. Several local leaders were there as well, including Mayor India Kincannon and County Mayor Glenn Jacobs. Knoxville Assistant Fire Chief Mark Wilbanks believes 9-11 changed the way we do a lot of things, including the way emergency personnel respond to calls. Things changed in the United States after 9-11. The way we operate in emergency services uh, kind of took an about face and we rethought everything that we did. Um, and, but one of the big things is, is, is we have that mentality that we're always prepared. Um, we're always working towards the what if events, the big scale events that we hope we never have to, to respond to. New York Police Department Lieutenant Alex Fasaro spoke ahead of the climb today. He was at work 22 years ago today when he got a call from his wife. I promised her that I would be okay. I asked her to tell my parents that I'm going to be okay. And I made my way out into the chaos. Hand in hand, brave men and women worked at least 12 hours a day. And it was not uncommon early on to work 20 hours a day. Now, the message we heard from the lieutenant and local leaders like Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs goes beyond remembering. It means educating those too young to remember, continuing to teach the younger generations about what happened on this day, again, 22 years ago. Of course, today's ceremony and stair climb here in Knoxville were just two of many events around East Tennessee, like this one you see in pictures posted by the Oak Ridge Police Department happening at Oak Ridge High School with students from the Navy ROTC program, student council and community members honoring the fallen first responders. Also taking part, we're told, was one Oak Ridge police officer who served for 20 years with the New York City Police Department and worked ground zero back on September 11th, 2001. Our next Big 7 and 7 story for you tonight, a chance to honor another hero, an East Tennessee native and now recipient of the Medal of Honor. You know, we've been sharing his story from the Vietnam War for the past few weeks now. Today, Captain Larry Taylor rode on the back of a convertible rather than piloting a Cobra helicopter as people lined the streets of Chattanooga in honor of his service during the Vietnam War. Captain Taylor was presented with the nation's highest military honor by President Biden for his rescue of four fellow Army personnel surrounded by the enemy, landing his helicopter while under fire, letting them climb onto his two-man aircraft flying them into safety while risking his own life. Taylor is also the subject of a new exhibit going up at the Coolidge Medal of Honor Heritage Center in Chattanooga, a museum dedicated to heroes like Captain Taylor in a city that's dubbed the birthplace of the Medal of Honor, going back to the battles where they are during the Civil War. Our next Big 7 story answers in a death investigation from last week. Uh, the Blount County Sheriff's Office now calling it a homicide and saying a man arrested Saturday night faces charges. Zachary Justin Hayes is the suspect's name. The Sheriff's Office says he lived in Knoxville and along with the homicide charge, Hayes is facing charges of aggravated burglary, abuse of a corpse, and intentional killing of an animal. Now the sheriff identifying the victim as 63-year-old Kimberly Hayes with autopsy reports showing she suffered a number of stab wounds Investigators reportedly found a dead cat in the house, which had also been stabbed. Of course, we'll keep you posted as this case moves through the legal system. Another investigation in our Big 7 list for you, two unexplained deaths. Unexplained, that's how the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office describes them. Two people found dead yesterday afternoon at a home near Crossville. 56-year-old Tamara Clark and 54-year-old Del Clark were found dead in their home on Deep Draw Road. The initial investigation revealing no signs of foul play. Investigators say autopsies will be performed, adding that there is no threat to public safety. Our next Big 7 story, waiting longer for the case of a deadly interstate crash to go to trial. 
A motion has been approved to delay the trial for a man charged with the death of a member of the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. The motion filed by Christopher Savannah's counsel team stating they needed more time to, quote, adequately prepare for the defense, end quote. The motion cites several issues in their preparation of evidence, including one of Savannah's blood samples not being tested by an independent laboratory and the ongoing search for an additional expert to testify. In August, Savannah was indicted on vehicular homicide by recklessness and impairment charges after striking LCSO Sergeant Chris Jenkins. The trial was originally supposed to start this Wednesday, September 13th. A new trial date has not yet been announced. Our next big story for you, big business in downtown Knoxville. A report from the Department of Revenue has new data to back up the notion that business there is booming. The Downtown Knoxville Alliance looking at business growth numbers from Market Square, Gay Street, the Old City, and the surrounding areas, finding that from 2021 to 22, revenue for, well, places like restaurants, uh, other service providers, also retail shops, is up nearly 20%. Now, some downtown businesses made it through the pandemic. Others had to close their doors, and some new businesses have now taken their place. 